Hi all, welcome to my channel. So today we will be doing a short tutorial on how to use Power BI to do machine learning. This is the part 3 of the tutorial. So if you haven't watched the first part and the second part, please watch it. It will be very helpful for this tutorial. So for today's topic, we will be using the PyCurrent library to do anomaly detection. For today's outcome, it's very simple. We will be using the machine temperature failure data set to do our anomaly detection on. So as you can see, our model is able to, to highlight the falling ages as anomalous over here. All the falling ages. And today, you'll be able to do this after the tutorial. So these are the three prerequisites that you have to install before proceeding. So next, first, get the machine temperature failure data set from this GitHub repo. Okay, over here. Copy, paste. So now, go to the edit button here. And select all. Copy. Open up your notepad. And paste it. Now save it. Control S. I will save it as machine failure data set. So instead of dot txt, I'll be saving it as dot dot csv. Okay, save it. Okay, and close it. So now the next step is to open up your Power BI. So go to Power BI Desktop, open it up. Okay, go to get data, go to CSV, and open up the data set. Load it. Okay, so now go to data, home, transform data. So now we'll be doing the data preparation to, to run our model. So now first thing you need to do is to add a new column. So I'm going to add an index column. So change this index into a whole number. And I'm going to make it all small caps to standardize. So now I will copy this and paste another data set here. So these two copy is the same. So I'm going to rename this as original data set. And this one will be the predicted data set. Okay, so we'll be running our model on this predicted data set. So now you need to go run Python screen. And here, go back to the slide. Okay, copy the whole code here and paste it. Okay, so basically, for this for this anomaly detection model, I'll be using the k nearest neighbor. I'll be ignoring this feature called index because this column is not meaningful for the model prediction. So after doing this, press OK. OK, once it's done, click here, delete this column because it's not useful anymore. Expand the result and press OK. Okay, so once it's done, I'm going to delete some columns. First, I need to delete this timestamp. I'm going to delete this value. Later, I'll explain why is it so. So now for, I'll be deleting this label also. So now I left the index and the anomaly score. So I'm going to rename this index to small caps and rename this as anomaly score.
Okay, so make sure I change the normal score to decimal number and change the index to a whole number. So once you are done, click home and close and apply. Okay, so now go to your predicted data set over here. Okay, so now I need you to add a new column. Okay, so now based on the anomaly score, we're going to set some threshold to pick up the anomaly. So anomaly score threshold. Let's name it as binary. So it's a one or zero result. So if anomaly score is less than 0 0.5, it will be zero. If more than 0 0.5, more or equal to 0 0.5, it will be one. So just check it. And now go to your data model and make sure that your index is being linked. Yeah, once it's linked, you are able to assess both the values from the original data set and predicted data set. That's the reason why I deleted those unnecessary columns as it will be a duplicate from the original data set. So now we go to visualization. I'll be using this line chart. So first for the axis, I'll be using the timestamp. So I'm going to change the timestamp timestamp to from the date hierarchy change to timestamp and next I'm going to select the anomaly score binary and put it inside the values and next I'll put in the actual temperature values at the y2 axis okay so now to make the anomaly more obvious, I'm going to change the color. So under color, I'm going to change the anomaly score binary into red. Okay, let me see if there's other chart that's more obvious. Okay, apparently the area chart is more obvious. Okay, as you can see, for all the fallen ages, the model is able to predict that all these characteristics is considered anomalous yeah at all the falling ages as you can see here however if you observe closely there's this sudden spike here which anomaly detector cannot detect so from this result I can conclude that the model is actually biased towards falling ages so some question that you may ask is that Hey, there's a lot of falling ages here. Why isn't the model being able to detect these falling ages? So the answer is very simple. So if you remember my threshold, I said as 0 0.5. So if you want the model to be able to pick up anomaly easily, you lower the threshold to 0 0.3 or lower and click OK. So now you go back to a visualization, you can see that for more falling ages, the model is able to detect anomalies in it. So with this, I've come to the end of my tutorial. Thank you for your time. And remember to subscribe and watch more of my videos. Thank you.